Did your research interest somehow change? Part of it was in a similar lane, and then part of it was novel. You know, how did you basically get accepted to a PhD program? And then I think having strong connections for the uh, references. So people generally think PhD is harder than math. There were some things that were less hard than I expected. So I wasn't really thinking about asking this question, but so my viewer you know, want to go to like, you know, sometimes a master's program, sometimes PhD program, or sometimes a college professor. Then did your research interest somehow change when you go to, when you went to PhD or, you know, say be, became a college professor? What's the kind of progress so far? Mm. Yeah, so I felt as though it would be helpful to build upon the foundation of research that I had started in my master's degree. So having one project completed, I thought, well, now some of that process and approach is familiar. So rather than doing something completely different, <laughs> following in a similar line would allow me to build upon the work that I had done before and have some familiarity with part of the project. So I stuck within the sport of gymnastics and that population, but then I had other interests beyond self-talk as well. And so I thought about my own experience as a gymnast and how I tend to be very perfectionistic <laughs> in a lot of areas of life from you know my academics and my sport and so I wondered in a sport like gymnastics that is judged kind of to a standard of perfection are you know how are the athletes experiences of perfectionism and also of their ability to stay in the present moment and performance. So I looked at mindfulness and perfectionism in gymnastics. So part of the project, I built upon a foundation that was familiar. And then part of it, I added new, new themes and ideas that were also of interest. Some of those also matched with my then doctoral advisor. So again, I used a similar strategy of what was my mentor familiar with, what pieces of their work might be compatible with my interests that I could then draw from some of their experience and learn from them in an area. And my uh, doctoral advisor had done um, a lot of personal and professional work in the area of mindfulness. And so I was curious to know how this like mindful non-judgment of experience would fit within a judged sport. And so the mindfulness and perfectionism pieces became of interest. So I guess that's how it built. Part of it was in a similar lane and then part of it was novel. And then um, I wanted to use some of the new statistics that I had learned as I took more courses in my PhD program. So I learned more sophisticated statistical analyses and so then wanted to use those in my dissertation. And so the approaches and the methods that I took to analyze the data were different ones, um, but still there was something that was consistent from the work I had done earlier. Um, and then as a professional, those are both areas that continue to be of interest. And so I love contributing to self-talk and perfectionism research, but also I noticed that a lot of my work focused on performance. And I'm also very interested in the, in the more holistic well-being of athletes and their quality of life. So that's an area that I might want to pursue more in moving forward. Cool. Sorry, that was so long. No, this is good. <laughs> I get this question all the time. So you got accepted to, you know, I can say really, really good sports type program in the US, um, or I guess in the world. Then, like, what did you do? Like, how did you, you know, how did you basically get accepted to a PG program? Yeah, I think there were a variety of things that helped to get accepted. So one, um, I had pretty strong academic record going into my PhD work or into applying for doctoral programs. So my undergraduate degree and my graduate degree had strong had strong grades. So in my <laughs> undergraduate degree, I earned a 3.99 um, grade point average, and then in master's degree, a 4.0. And so. I think that helps, but it's not the only factor. But I think there's something about those records that also shows that there's a diligence and a striving to do really strong work. So that was one of the components. 
Um, but I also wanted to make personal connections with the people that I would be working with because ultimately in a doctoral program, I think you work really closely with your advisors, maybe in their line of research or they mentor you a lot. And so I wanted to be able to meet the people that I might have the opportunity to work with if I were accepted into the program. So I made a visit, or I contacted the program and coordinated a time to visit, meet some of the faculty and students and sit in on a class to experience what it might be like to be a student in the program before I applied and was accepted. Because I think in two ways that helped me to learn could I envision myself being there as a student, sure. but also for them to be able to tell, is this someone we would want to bring into our program? Because ultimately I think both things are important for it to be a good fit for the program and for the student. So making a visit was helpful and having some of that personal connection. And then I think having strong connections for the uh, references or recommendation letters is important. So building relationships early in your academic life as an undergraduate and then as a maybe an early graduate student, those are people who might be able to talk about your strengths and what you would contribute. And so having those relationships over time, I think was able to have strong um, recommendations yeah. for the program. Speaking of which, so how did you get letter of recommendation? Do you remember like, how many letters of recommendation you got and so, from where? Yeah, so that's a great question. I want to say there were three or maybe four mm -hmm. letters of recommendation, but I think three. Um, and I mostly drew those from previous faculty members that I had worked with in mm. academics. So um, people who could speak towards strengths in different areas. So in a PhD program, if I had done any research as a master's student, for example, with my uh, graduate advisor at Springfield College and my master's degree, that person would be really helpful to provide a reference to speak toward my strengths as a researcher and maybe as a student if I took classes with that person. Um, so I think thinking about who you know, but also what experiences you've done with those people and what strengths they could speak toward about you and strategically picking people that have a, know you in a variety of different settings. So if you might have an opportunity to coach, is there someone you've coached with that can provide a reference for you? Or um, yeah, so I think as a student, as a coach, um, as a researcher, if I were to teach someone who's observed me teach, that would be a really good person to ask for a sense. recommendation. Yeah, it's nice to have a, you know, I think like different types of folks mm -hmm. who kind of, you know, have a lot of relationship with you, you know, they, they can give you a good recommendation from different angle. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, so people generally think PhD is harder than master's program. Hmm. Um, I mean, of course, depending on what you do, but what's your thought on this? Like a PhD harder than a master's program or, you know? Yeah, no, I think that's a really important thing to think about. And um, it was a little bit surprising for me. So much like you mentioned, um, I think I expected the PhD to be exceedingly harder than the master's level degree because it's another step up. And in some ways, there were a higher set of expectations at the doctoral level, and there's a different maybe standard of performance as far as um, written assignments and presentations and professionalism and some of those kinds of responsibilities that are expected. Um, and I also found that there were some things that were less hard than I expected because more of those learning tasks were familiar from having done experiences in my master's degree program. So for example, the research piece, while it was still really a rigorous project and I needed to search for a whole new set of literature. Well, you did it one time. Exactly. So you have a really good foundation to bring into a PhD program. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's precisely what I experienced, is that having done a project before, so many of those things were compatible. How do I recruit participants? How do I submit an IRB protocol? Um, how do I conceptualize my research idea and start searching the literature? Even those kinds of tasks were things that were more familiar having done them already. Mm -hmm. So that piece was maybe a little easier than I expected because 
you know, they were more familiar. Yeah, it took just simply less time for you to do these things. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, you pretty much had more time for other stuff. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Which is helpful because I think there were still a lot of other things that were asked in a doctoral program like teaching courses and um, working in consulting capacity with teams and athletes and serving as a student. So many of those same roles that we talked about, but in, you know, another another setting. Yeah. I get this question a lot too. Do you? Uh, so you became a faculty member. Uh, you know, my viewer, you know, I think maybe 50% or 